Okay, thanks, Alessandro. Yeah, I, I know that sounds like I'm a bit uh, upset by by speed, but I am not at all. I'm kind of a slow, slow guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's true, but. Okay, as you know, during my postdoc, I work on, on cell migration. Cell migration is important uh, both in uh, physiological and pathological conditions, so it's involved in uh, development, immunoresponse, but also in, uh, tumor, uh, in tumor metastasis. What, uh, what is known is that the cell moves relying on the actomyosin, actomyosin complex. And what I study during my, my postdoc is try to relate the dynamic of the actomyosin and myosin with uh, some um, specific property of, uh, of cell tra uh, trajectories. <coughs> I start working on cell migration, analyzing the data of the first world cell race that was a scientific uh, event where we, 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 we use a standardized condition, so this kind of line that you can see here in the, in the movie, we put the cell on this uh, fibronectin treated line and we analyze their migration. So, of course, that is a trick that uh, simplifies a lot the cell migration because you can think you put your cell on, on, on a cover slip and after the cell will start to migrate in any direction and uh, reduce the 2D migration to 1D, 1, 1D problem simplify a, a lot the way to look at it. And also the, the second important trick here is that we try to analyze as many cell types that we can but in a kind of uh, standardized way. So because you can have many studies on cell migration already published, but everyone in a different system. The idea is uh, to, to look as much as we can, but uh, in a standardized way. So how the race was organized? So six Nikon sent and uh, around the world uh, collect, uh, collect samples. So the idea was that uh, people from different labs just uh, send their cell to the center and uh, try to, to, to win the challenge and to be the, the fastest cell of, of the world. So in the different uh, Nikon center, they visualize the cell in the, in the standard device that I just showed you before. And after they all send the data to, to Paris where I, I, I analyze it. So that is the kind of data that, that we have. So as you can see, you have a cell of different shape. Some cell type just uh, move and divide. Some cell type is very spread and long. Some cell type are very small and fast. So really, you can have a, a, a plethora of phenotypes. So it's hard to, 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 to say. Oh, first, uh, so okay, it was a kind of race. So we, we put order in the, in, the, in the stuff that you saw before. OK, now let's run. Uh, let's see. OK, again, you have fast cell, slow cell. So that, that is the, the kind of funny part. So we, we, we here, so it, it's exactly the same data that I showed you before. Just here, I artificially cut and then oriented in order to, 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 to write the, the, the fun. Okay, that is the kind of, uh, of data. So what we did, we visualized the, the nuclei of the cell with uh, EUST, that is a colorant that you can use in live in cell, and I developed a software to, 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 to segment and track this, uh, this image. Okay, that is the kind of, uh, of, of trajectory that we measure. Okay, it was a race, so we need a winner. The winner was a uh, human embryonic um, stem cells that uh, run the, the 350 micrometer at a speed of uh, uh, a bit more than five micrometers per minute. But it's okay, that was the fun. So the, 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 the winner got a, a, a Nikon camera. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> she was quite happy. Uh, and, uh, and that was the fun, but it's okay. The, the race uh, is not just for fun, you can imagine. All that was not a joke. So the idea was really to collect uh, as much as statistics we can. So at the end of the, of the story, we got uh, a lot of single cell track. And what most important is related to the single cell track, we have population analysis. So we have a level of uh, statistics that have, uh, we can say, uh, two, two, uh, two families. So on one side, we look at the, at, at the single cell. And the other side, we, we look at, at the population level. And uh, at that time, I focus, OK, first stuff, uh, OK, I am a bit obsessed. So you, you look uh, if the cell moves fast or, or slow. So the first parameter that we analyze, that is a chymograph. So here you have the time, here you have the speed. If a cell moves fast, OK, you say it will display it rapidly in the stem. In this kind, the cell is moving slowly. And uh, the second parameter that uh, I analyze is how often is uh, changing direction. So how, uh, for how long it will keep the same direction before, before changing. So here you can see is, uh, is a cell that, uh, that moves always in the same direction, and here is a cell that is just changing its direction. So this is the two parameters that I analyze. Okay, this is just definition of higher defined persistence. 
And uh, what you can imagine that uh, at each single step, a cell has to decide if keep the direction or change it. So you can give a kind of uh, probability to keep the direction that we call P and a probability to, to, to change the direction that is called Q. And that's the, okay, you, you, you can mathematically describe objects that are moving in that way. And it seems that uh, more or less all the cells that we have can kind of respect this, uh, this kind of behavior. So again, uh, now we, we, we put together two stuff, how fast they move and how long they move in the same direction. And what I found is that exists a correlation between the mean uh, speed of a population and its mean persistence. So it means that uh, faster, uh, faster population are also more persistent. But that is a correlation that is uh, at the population level. So at the moment, you have two parameters that are a priori independent. So how fast they go and how long they will keep their direction. But there is no reason to think that these two are interconnected. So you can think, OK, that is a bit a trivialization, that uh, if you have a, a population under the right pressure, mm -hmm. if, uh, if you need to be, to be fast, you, you will be fast. And on the other side, if you need to be persistent, you will be persistent. And if independently you, you, you need both, uh, is, uh, you, you, you develop it both, but there is not a connection between these two. It's just that to effic efficiently display Spe speed, speed is not enough, because I if I want to reach the, the, the door, but I run uh, all along this, uh, this, uh, this room, I will never reach the door. What I want to do is to reach the door. So not only I have to go fast, but I have also to, to go in the direction of the door. So here the idea is to check if exists something that can link uh, these uh, this two parameters. And that is what we, we, we analyze further. And here, we choose two, two cell types, RP1 cell and bone marrow the, the, the dendritic cells, that is kind of uh, prototype of the two main kind of cell locomotion. So there are mesenchymal cell and amoeboid cell. So mesenchymal cell is cells that move based on adhesion. So they kind of uh, protrude, they attach, and after they move. That is the, 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 con the, the, the most common uh, way we imagine cell move. And uh, the bone marrow this year says that are amoeboid-like, so they, they move like, uh, like amoeba, so they kind of uh, squeeze their self and they kind of, uh, or kind of swim. That is the two ways cells used to move. So one attach and, and pull, and the other one try to move. One in base in uh, acting um, polymerization, and the other one is myosin contraction, because you contract your back and you protrude your front. So it's like an amoeba, when you see the amoeba moving in, 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 in the water. So here we, we played the, the, the RP1 cell in line exactly like in the race. If you put bone marrow on line, this doesn't work. You need to confine it. So we put it on channel. But that is just to show that we did that this in, in, in 1D, more or less exactly like the race. But after we do the same, but in 2D. So we put, again, the RP1 in uh, a, a plate uniformly coated with fibronectin, and in the case of uh, DC, we put it between two planes, because uh, again, so as for the channel one, we need to confine this cell. So this cell have to, to kind of squeeze to, to efficiently move, because they have to translate the friction on the, on, on the wall of the confinement. And finally, we test also the DC on a kind of uh, 3D structure because we embedded them in a collagen gel and after we squeeze again. So the concept of squeezing is very important. So not only the, the squeezing, so uh, uh, you have a, a roof on top of the cell where the cell can push, but also you have uh, all around a matrix that the cell has to, to, to move inside. So that is why we, we call this 3D. But also we, we test another kind of cell, melloid cell, inside the, the, the fin of a living medata fish. And this is the movie that I just saw so here. So uh, what we surprisingly found that uh, doesn't matter if you move in 1D, in 2D, in 3D, or in vivo. Doesn't, n doesn't matter neither if you are of uh, mesenchymal, of uh, amoeboid, but all the curve of uh, persistent versus speed can collapse in a uh, unique master curve with an exponential relationship between uh, the time you spend to move in the same direction and the speed. So we see that... Uh, Two parameters that we can think uh, a priori, opla. no, yet, a priori independent are de facto intrinsically correlated. So what we see here that is not a population of cells that move faster that is also more persistent. In uh, neither a cell that move faster that is more persistent, but each time a cell is moving faster, it will go more straight. So it's kind of inertia, but you have to think that at this shell you have no inertia. 
So that uh, at, this, at this site, uh, inertia doesn't exist. And, uh, um, and it's okay, so we, we, we found that the, this, this basic correlation and we start to think, but uh, what could be the source of this correlation? Okay, now we know that it's not independent, so these two stuff go together, intrinsically together. And, and the question is uh, where they are linked. And uh, okay, it was a bit natural to think on the uh, acting retrograde flow. So the acting retrograde flow is uh, this, um, this net flow of, uh, of acting that is uh, generated by the acting that is polymerized at the front of the leading of uh, the of the leading edge of a moving cell and uh, generate a filament of actin that are pushed backwards. You can think that cells to move are like a caterpillar. So you add a, mo a monomer in the front in order to, 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 uh, to, to generate this flow on, on the back, but uh, move on, uh, on the right side. And uh, of course, to, to, to this, this, this kind of locomotion can, can work only if you have a adhesion point. So it's like you, you add a monomer here, but in order, uh, and this uh, we, we slide on this direction, but in order to move the cell in, in the right direction, you have to anchor. So if you anchor in a point and you add that monomer, you, you push the, the front uh, forward and so on. If there is no adhesion, how do you do? You kind of slip. So if you move on soap, what's happening is that you try to, to move your leg faster. So, and this uh, is the same. So if you can translate this acting retrograde flow in a net movement, so that you do by, by addition. But uh, if you are in a, in a slippery condition, you, you try to increase this flow in order to translate uh, a, a bigger percentage of this, uh, of this movement on the right direction. So, and this is what we, we did here experimentally. So with different conditions, it's enough to play with the temperature or with uh, the asiveness of the surface where the cells are treated, or removing the integrant from, uh, from, from, from the cells. And what you obtain is that you can differently modulate the speed of the flow that is here and the speed of the cell that is here. So you can increase the speed of the, of the flow, and sometimes the speed of the cell doesn't change, but that can be a phenotype specific for the dendritic cell. So we are able, the important message here is we are able to modulate the speed of this flow. And what is interesting that what perfectly correlates with the persistent time is the speed of the flow. The speed of the cell is directly proportional to the speed of the flow. So this is probably the, the, the source of the correlation between the cell speed and the cell persistent. But uh, not only, we have a, a second very important observation is that in function of the speed of the flow, some proteins are uh, differently displaced inside the cells. So here in three colors, you have three conditions with uh, uh, growing uh, actin retrograde flow. So you see, if you, if you look at the profile, so the profile along, uh, along the cell from, uh, from, from the edge to the interior, so if you, uh, the contrary, sorry. If you look at this, uh, at this profile, uh, for, for cells that doesn't bind to, to actin, this profile is uh, not uh, affected by a change in the speed of the flow. So you change the speed of the flow, but the profile of the protein doesn't change. After, if the protein is mildly attached to actin, like life act, you can perturbate a bit. If it's strongly act attached to the act, you perturbate a lot, like in the case uh, of uh, myosin light chain or, or, or eutrophin. So I don't know if that is clear. So you, you have a, a flow of actin. If you attach to it, you will push back to the cell. If you don't attach to it, you are unaffected. So that's allow us to, to build a, 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 genetic, a, generic, a generic model that is uh, really a, a minimal model. So it's a model where we put the minimal number of objects that can explain our phenotype, essentially the, the, the exponential correlation between uh, the speed and the persistent. So here we have, okay, the, the speed of the cell and the speed of the, of the acting retrograde flow, that is this net flow generated. And we say that the speed of the cell is directly proportional to the speed of the flow. And after you, you have these, uh, these uh, red dots, that's a generally, we can call it a polarity marker. We can give it a name or not, it's the same. And we say that uh, this polarity marker is uh, generating the flow. So higher is the difference of concentration of this polarity marker between the front and the back, and higher will be the speed of the flow. But as this I showed you before, this polarity marker is, is, is binding to, to, to the actin, he will also advect it back by the flow. So it's like uh, if you think to move in a river and you move uh, against, uh, against the current, 
for you will be harder to move against the current if the current is strong and for you will be hard to reach the other side. And that is, uh, is exactly the same. So you generate the flow, but the flow is a barrier to diffuse to the other side of the cell. So what's happening is that the, these red dots have to diffuse to the front in order to change this front in a new back. But uh, there is the flow. So they have to win this barrier, and diffusion could be not enough to, to win the barrier of, of, the, of the flow. And this is the, the link uh, and the positive uh, uh, feedback between, between the speed of the cell and, uh, and the persistence, because faster will be the speed of the cell, faster is the flow, and stronger will be the barrier that you need to win in order to switch polarity. I hope it's clear. They ask us to, 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 to kind of uh, provide a proof of principle and uh, what we did, we take advantage of uh, ARPIN. So as known, uh, so the, 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 the actin rate of FO is polymerized uh, one of the other also by ARP23. That is one of the actin polymerizator. It's the one that uh, generated the branch actin. You have two main stuff, so the, the filamentous actin and the branched one. One is made by, by formin and the other by ARP23 dependent. What is known is that ARPIN is a really strong inhibitor of ARP23. So if you add ARPIN to the cell, you kind of uh, reduce uh, this, uh, this machinery. So you, you, you kind of block this flow, or at least you, 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 you strongly slow down. And uh, the idea here is to take advantage of uh, a system that is made of two elements, the CYBN and CRY2. When you illuminate with uh, blue light, these two, these two elements will, will strongly attach uh, each other. So what we did, we generate a construct with, uh, with uh, ARPIN and alternatively, or life act or eutrophin. And uh, what we already know is uh, that uh, life act is not affected by the flow, while eutrophin it is. So life act will not uh, be enough to depauperate the front from, uh, from, from ARPIN because life act attached the touch from, uh, from, from the acting cable and uh, will not be advected to the back to the cell, while uh, the eutrophin is effectively displaced to the back. So the idea is to, to, to link the ARPIN to life act with these uh, optogenetic tools or to link the ARPIN to the eutrophin. And what we expect that when we link to life act, okay, life act, the ARPIN will go to the actin, but for a very short time. So he will attach to it, but after attaching it, he will detach. And when he will detach, after he will diffuse again to the front. And this will be not enough to depauperate the front from, uh, from ARPIN. On the other side, when you attach it to eutrophin, what will happen is that this bind is very strong between the eutrophin and the actin. So you, you, you attach the ARPIN to, to, to the eutrophin, and uh, the eutrophin will be advected back to the back of the cell, and you will manage to depauperate the front from ARPIN, and you will rescue the ARP23 dependent uh, polymerization of actin. OK, that was the cartoon after we did it really. And uh, OK, that is uh, just control if you use only only ARP and you illuminate blue, blue light uh, and you see that almost nothing happened. You can do the same this time with life act. Okay, that is the ARP. When you illuminate with blue light, uh, you see that ARP go where life act is. So ARP go where the actin is, but after you cannot appreciate any flow. And uh, if you do the same with eutrophin, uh, what you see that when you shine blue light, uh, Harping go where the actin is, but is also advected to the back. And you can see a neck flow. So we analyze this. So first, the, the profile. That is exactly the same that I showed you before. What we see is uh, just the profile of Harping. When we link Harping to life act, uh, is a bit, this, uh, is a bit uh, affected. So you can see also if the binding on, of uh, life act to actin is not super strong, it, it is enough to, to, to a bit move the profile. And finally, if you attach it to, to eutrophin, it will be strongly affected and uh, will be affected to the back of the cell. But not only, if you look at the phenotype of, uh, of, of migration, what happens is that if you overexpress ARPIN, as, uh, as expected, the, the speed of the cell goes down and also the persistence of the cell goes down. And that is because, okay, you inhibit the, the ARP2 triponibilization and that is the phenotype that you expect. 
After, if you use the life act trick, this is not enough to rescue the phenotype, while if you use the eutrophin 1, you will risk both the speed of the cell and the persistence of the cell. So we, we kind of prove that, okay, not sure that in reality work like that, but a system like that can generate this kind of behavior. So it's possible that a polarity marker advected by the acting vector that flow generate uh, this uh, kind of, uh, of correlation. So if finally, what we prove that, okay, two parameters that uh, we can think a priori independent, uh, sense speed and self persistent, are in reality intrinsically correlated, that this correlation follows a kind of uh, exponential, exponential, uh, exponential relationship. And uh, this is, uh, is due to the, 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 the net flow of the actin on, on, on the back direction, so the, the actin retrograde, retrograde flow. So what, what, what is clear now is that a, a positive feedback like that, that link the polarity with, uh, with, the, with the speed, could be, could be very crucial in any condition of, of taxis. So when the cell move, but move following a specific, uh, a specific queue. So at the moment, that is what we are, we are working now. Okay, and here, okay, people to, to thanks, always nice to, to stay here and to remember nice time. So I always thanks Alessandro for all the mentoring. The Mathieu Piel lab and the people that collaborate with the work of, of, of the speed persistent rule, people in the Michael Six lab in Vienna, the theory schistet that help a lot with, uh, with the model, both uh, Raphael Bortuguet and Nir Gov, the guy that help with the optogenetic, uh, Simon de Beco and Mathieu Copé, and the, the, the girls that give us the, the data from, from uh, the, 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 the Medaga fish that is Carolina in, uh, in Milano. Thanks you all for attention. <laughs>